Good morning, Sea of Galilee. she got up, the first thing they'd have to do is put a jug on her head just like that and she'd have to walk 15-20 minutes to the well and get water. And then she'd put the water jug on her head and come back and probably go back in the evening and they'd have to make that water work, two jugs a day. Now remember, men did not carry water. A big scene, chapter 16 and verse 16. You know what that is? And I said, so what? And he said, what do you mean, so what? This is where you come around. I started driving and he said, by the way, it doesn't hurt if you tell that to your children down the road. If such an insignificant event, I mean, it's really insignificant that my grandfather met his wife there. If such an insignificant event can be remembered three and four and five generations, why do we suspect the most significant events? Are you getting my point? Mahmoud is making pomegranate juice. Yeah, he puts it in the, cuts it, puts it in the machine and squeezes it. Fresh right now this time of year, pomegranate. There it goes. You're a movie star now, Mahmoud. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. between 350 and the 9th century, four times. Now, here I would stop and ask, did we have a congregation here? We did not. Why would you enlarge the church four times if you there was no congregation here? You know that people... Hatsor had 900 iron chariots and Israel had no iron chariots. They had slingshot guys and guys with swords. And you don't just, it'd be like going out with pistols and machine guns against tanks coming across this big valley, Jezreel Valley. So he says, I'm not going out there. He said, the only way I'll go out there is if Deborah leads the army. <laughs> One of those great moments for women when men fall flat on their face and women step up and take over and be in charge. I've learned something since being married to this woman for 43 years is that women are very amazing creatures. When us men fail, women always will step in and fill the gap. I have found that to be over and over again. 
So Deborah says, okay, I will lead the armies of Israel. And she prays. And as she does, these 900 chariots are coming across the valley. And all of these soldiers, Israel's terrified. God causes a great rain to come down. The valley floods. The, Kid, the Kishon Valley a River, which is down there, overflows. All the iron chariots sink in the mud. After explaining Mount Tabor, our group goes up on the platform and looks out over the Jezreel Valley and the mountains of Gilboa, where Jesus said, go out into all the world. And it looks like you can see all all of the world from up here. We're going down the mountain. I forgot to get the video coming up, but here we're going back down. I got this map. I need the long branch. August group of legates from Legatus, and we're coming up to Cana. And there's Amr and Deacon Dennis. Everybody's coming up together. We're going to renew our marriage vows here. There's Father Chris. And there's Stephen. There they all are. Good looking group, huh? Very punctual, folks, too. Wonderful Catholic. I love this group. We arrived at the wedding church where Jesus turned water into wine, but we usually don't have our renewal ceremony in the church because it's too crowded with people. So we went in the Divine Mercy Chapel, and here we are ready to renew wedding vows. And I would ask the husbands now to repeat after me these words. I renew and reaffirm, I renew and reaffirm my wedding vows to you. My wedding vows to you. Once again, once again, I promise to love and honor you. I promise to love and honor you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. All the days of my life. All, all the days of my life. Now I would ask you who are wives to please repeat these words after me. I redo and reaffirm. I redo and reaffirm. My wedding vows to you. My wedding vows to you. Once again, I promise. Once again, I promise to love and honor you. To love and honor you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. What God has joined together, let no one set apart. The wedding rings they once exchanged are the sign of their fidelity. Continue to give them many happy, healthy, and beautiful years, for we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> John, what he does is he bookends things. In his gospel, he always bookends things. What I mean by that is he will say something at the beginning, and it, you'll know that it's going to also show up again at the end. For example, he mentions Peter at the beginning, 1 John chapter 142, when he says, you shall be called rock. And then at the end, the very last thing, he says, feed my sheep and tend my lambs. He's showing you the pri the priority Peter has just by where he places him in the beginning and at the end. He also places Mary twice in the Gospels. She's at the very beginning and she's at the very end. And people say, well, you know, you Catholics make too big a deal about Mary, but in John's Gospel, she's only mentioned twice. Yeah, but where is she mentioned? Sometimes it's not how many times, but how and where. She's mentioned at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And where is she seen at the end of the Gospel of John? At the foot of the cross.
back to the bus to leave Kata and head for lunch in Nazareth. Well, we're now in Nazareth and we just arrived at the YMCA. We're gonna have lunch here. This is the Nazareth Young Christian Men's Association. We like supporting the Christians here. So you can see the name right there. All of you, I'm sure, can read that. YMCA. Lunch was great. Good. Great food and plenty of it. Good. What did you think of the food? Oh, I thought it was terrific. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, we've just parked and we're now in Nazareth and we're starting to walk up the street and our destination is right there. That is the Church of the Annunciation marking the place where the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, you're going to have a son. And so here we go up the street walking through Nazareth. We've arrived here at the Church of Annunciation, beautiful, largest basilica in the Middle East. You have the angel coming and speaking to Mary. Of course, Jesus is at the peak of the most important, of course. And you have, this says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us in Latin and the four evangelists. Beautiful church. And uh, here's our group. This is Amr's home church, by the way, our guide Amr. This is his home parish. He was baptized here, confirmed here. And he's explaining to our Legatus group all about his home parish where the angel met Mary. In 1969, when we finished, we thought, give it some time, and people will forget and they'll start coming back. We're coming down the stairs now to the place where the angel met Mary. This is the cave where she lived and the angel met her here. And this is where the words are spoken. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you right here in this cave. We pray the rosary here because this is where the words of the rosary came from. So we always pray the first joyful mystery right here where those words were spoken. The words on the altar here in Latin are, the word became flesh here. There's the lower church where the angel met Mary in the cave, and there's the upper church. Since this is Amr's home parish, he's explaining the church where he goes to every Sunday to all of our pilgrims and all the meaning of the art and the images of Mary everywhere here. Now we're leaving the church and we're heading back to the bus and we're on our way back to the hotel, but we're going to pray the rosary. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. So here's the video from the back of the bus. There's all the back of their heads. That's what a lot of people see through the whole pilgrimage. Here you can see the Sea of Galilee as we arrive back in Tiberias, where we're gonna have a couple of hours of free time before we go out to dinner. Here we are driving through the streets of Tiberias, almost to our hotel. We had a special two guests on the bus this time. It was Amer's wife and his granddaughter, Tala. And they joined us on the bus, and you can see them here. There's Omaima and Tala, the granddaughter. What a beautiful family Amr has. So it's the Sabbath here in Israel, so people are taking the day off, kind of like our Sunday back home. They're all enjoying the beach here. I got a view out of the top window here of the hotel. Our folks are enjoying a couple hours here, getting a drink, reading the scriptures, looking out over the sea. We're on our way to dinner at six o'clock and I'm going to make a separate video of the dinner because there's just way too much to get in the video today. So stay tuned for part two of the dinner tonight at the Magdalena restaurant. <laughs>